It is on behalf of the members and friends of the United Church of Christ, Midland, Michigan, that I welcome you to this time of worship. Please join with me now in our responsive call to worship. We come to this time of worship with a variety of emotions, expected, hopeful, downhearted, unsure, however we feel. We come to encounter the promises of God. We bring with us all the life we have lived up to this moment. We are young and old. We are from near and far. We bring stories of ancestors with us. Here is where we collect ourselves. In this still singular moment, we become ready to look forward into the future, filled with promises for us and for all. We come to encounter the promises of God. We come to this time of worship seeking a shift from the ordinary to the sacred, from doing to being. Recall that it is the Lent season of Lent. Remember the parable of the sower. The sower throws the seed and where it lands determines if it will grow or not grow. Think of the season of Lent as the sower, the time when seeds of faith are thrown with special intensity as a time when God calls to us in a low, urgent voice. Listen, Jesus is being drawn to Jerusalem. Where is God calling you to? What is God calling you to do? As we extinguish this light, 
We acknowledge the darkness and pain of injury done to the earth and its ecosystem. <laughs> Let us pray. Loving God, as we journey through this holy season of Lent, may we be open to your presence. Give us the strength to make the changes that are needed in our lives and the courage to take on the work of transforming the world. Amen. Welcome friends to this message for all ages. I brought with me my purple heart for Lent with the reminder that purple means we are in a time of praying and preparation for Easter. At this time, I invite you to light a candle in your home, bringing the light of Christ into your at-home worship space. Today, for our message for all ages, to go along with the scripture that Roger will be preaching on, our curriculum suggested a well-known children's book, a book about the enduring nature of family love and how it crosses generations. While not everyone can relate to this particular story, it is one example of how love and traditions can be passed along through various stages of life. We hope it can be a way to remind ourselves that God's goodness and love follow us. God's goodness and love have always been with past generations and will continue to be with generations to come, I share with you the book, Love You Forever, written by Robert Munch and illustrated by Sheila McGraw. Love You Forever, written by Robert Munch, illustrated by Sheila McGraw. Published by Firefly Books, and read and recorded today with permission from Firefly Books. A mother held her new baby and very slowly rocked him back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And while she held him, she sang, I'll love you forever. I'll like you for always. As long as I'm living, my baby, you'll be. The baby grew. He grew and he grew and he grew. He grew until he was two years old and he ran all around the house. He pulled all the books off the shelves. He pulled all the food out of the refrigerator and he took his mother's watch and flushed it down the toilet. Sometimes his mother would say, this kid is driving me crazy. But at nighttime, when that two-year-old was quiet, she opened the door to his room, crawled across the floor, looked up over the side of his bed, and if he was really asleep, she picked him up and rocked him back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And while she rocked him, she sang, I'll love you forever. I'll like you for always. As long as I'm living, my baby will be. The little boy grew. He grew and he grew and he grew. He grew until he was nine years old and he never wanted to come in for dinner. He never wanted to take a bath. And when grandma visited, he always said bad words. 
Sometimes his mother wanted to sell him to the zoo. But at nighttime, when he was asleep, the mother quietly opened the door to his room, crawled across the floor and looked up over the side of the bed. If he was really asleep, she picked up that nine-year-old boy and rocked him back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And while she rocked him, she sang, I'll love you forever. I'll like you for always. As long as I'm living, my baby you'll be. The boy grew. He grew and he grew and he grew. He grew until he was a teenager. He had strange friends, he wore strange clothes, and he listened to strange music. Sometimes his mother felt like she was in the zoo. But at nighttime, when that teenager was asleep, the mother opened the door to his room, crawled across the floor, looked up over the side of the bed, and if he really was asleep, she picked up that great big boy and rocked him back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And while she rocked him, she sang, I'll love you forever. I'll like you for always. As long as I'm living, my baby you'll be. That teenager grew. He grew and he grew and he grew. He grew until he was a grown man. He left home and got a house across town. But sometimes on dark nights, the mother got into her car and drove across town. If all the lights in her son's house were out, she opened his bedroom window, crawled across the floor and looked up over the side of his bed. If that great big man was really asleep, she picked him up and rocked him back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And while she rocked him, she sang, I'll love you forever. I'll like you for always. As long as I'm living, my baby, you'll be. Well, that mother, she got older. She got older and older and older. And one day she called up her son and said, you better come see me because I'm very old and sick. So her son came to see her. When he came to the door, she tried to sing the song. She sang, I'll love you forever. I'll like you for always. But she couldn't finish because she was too old and too sick. The son went to his mother he picked her up and rocked her back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And he sang this song. I'll love you forever. I'll like you for always. As long as I'm living, my mommy, you'll be. When the son came home that night, he stood for a long time at the top of the stairs. Then he went into the room where his very new baby daughter was sleeping. He picked her up in his arms and very slowly rocked her back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And while he rocked her, he sang, I'll love you forever. I'll like you for always. As long as I'm living, my baby, you'll be. God of generations, we have been gifted an amazing world, a legacy of faith, and a love for the ages. Be with us as we are called to sustain and pass these gifts to the next generations. Amen.
I invite you to hear now our scripture lesson for this day. It comes from the book of Genesis, chapter 17, verses 1 through 7 and 15 through 16. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless, and I will make my covenant between me and you and will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abram fell on his face, and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham. For I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring after you throughout their generations. For an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. Then God said to Abraham, As for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her. And moreover, I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall give rise to nations. Kings of peoples shall come from her. So ends our reading of Scripture this day. Amen. In recent weeks, there has been a topic of conversation that has come up in every Zoom gathering that I've participated in and in every phone conversation I have had with extended family members. The COVID-19 vaccines. During these conversations, many people have shared their frustration in trying to get an appointment for one of these vaccines. Even after being put on a list, they have wondered if they were ever going to be called to receive an injection. I can tell by the tone of their voices that they are very frustrated and somewhat discouraged. Other people I've spoken with have shared their relief in having received one of the vaccines. With happiness in their voices, it is clear that they have received a new lease on life. With the serum injected into one's arm, it is, impo it is possible to imagine a safer and more positive future. For many people, this future means returning to activities that we once took for granted before the pandemic hit. Activities that include spending time with family members and friends, going back to places of employment and academic institutions, engaging in volunteer activities, and yes, even returning to in-person worship. The experience of receiving a vaccine to protect us from a deadly virus can help us to understand more fully the emotions of Abram and Sarai in today's reading from Genesis. Like those who have received the vaccine, these two individuals have been given a new lease on life. For you see, prior to this moment, Abram and Sarai had been told by God that they would be made the parents of a great nation. As they grew older and older, it became more difficult for them to believe this promise. At one point, they even made the decision for Abraham to have a child with another person. Being in their 90s, Abram and Sarah find it impossible to believe that God's promise will ever be fulfilled. And it is at this most discouraging time in their life that God renews the promise, saying, I am God Almighty. 
walk before me and be blameless, and I will make my covenant <clears throat> between me and you and will make you exceedingly numerous. Whether you hear this story as an eyewitness account or a storyteller's explanation of how the people Israel came to be, it offers a powerful illustration of new beginnings. To mark this new beginning, these two individuals are given new names, Abraham and Sarah. Although the name change is quite subtle, it has profound theological implications. For you see, in biblical times, names reflected the character and the destiny of the individual. In this case, the name Abraham and the name Sarah reflect a blessing from God, and these names are linked to the covenant that God is making with them. You recall that God proclaims, I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring after you throughout all generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. The promise that God is making with Abraham and Sarah isn't just about them having children. It is the promise that God's abiding love will be with every generation. Therefore, this covenant offers hope not only to Abraham and Sarah, but to the people of Israel, and ultimately to every person on earth, including us. When you think about it, we experience new beginnings throughout our lives. These new beginnings might involve the start of a relationship, the beginning of an academic program or acquiring a new job. Other times, a new beginning maybe takes place after overcoming a medical issue or an emotional challenge. While some new beginnings are large in scale, the reality is that every new day is a new beginning. This is true whether we have received the COVID-19 vaccine or not. For you see, each one of us has the choice of how we will respond to the gift of each day. To begin, Every day we can reclaim the grace of God for ourselves. Throughout their lives, Abraham and Sarah made a variety of mistakes and at times demonstrated a lack of faith. They also weren't the most patient people on the planet. Despite all of this, God was forgiving and remained faithful to them. All of us make mistakes, and at times have difficulty trusting in God's abiding presence in our lives. And like Abraham and Sarah, we can be impatient when things don't happen as quickly as we had hoped. It's important to remember that God forgives us and remains with us. God's love always surrounds us. Every day, we can extend the grace of God to other people. This may involve seeking reconciliation with someone that we have been in conflict with. It may mean reaching out in an act of kindness or calling someone and reassuring that person that they are not forgotten or alone. Every day, we can appreciate the beauty of the world that we live in, whether it's viewing a piece of art created by someone, listening to a musical composition, or spending time in the beauty of the natural world. Every day, we can do something to make the world a more just and equitable place. 
This may involve connecting with others who are working to create change, learning more about an injustice, sharing our views with a politician, or contributing our financial resources to a cause that we believe in. Every day, we can worship God. We can give thanks for the ways in which God's love is made known to us through the love and the concern of other people. We can take time to reflect on the blessings that we receive. We can sing our own song of praise, and we can pray for ourselves and for other people. Every day, we can learn something new. There are endless ways to do this. We can read a book, watch a program on television, or take an online course, or watch a webinar. We can also participate in one of our church's Bible studies or discussion groups. Every day, we can engage in self-care. This involves doing things that support physical and emotional health. These are just a few of the many positive things that we can choose to do. Each new day is a new beginning filled with endless possibilities. We live each day with the reassurance that God's loving presence is with us. I am happy for all of the people who have received a vaccine to protect them from COVID-19. I pray that the distribution of these vaccines will continue to go smoothly and that within a few months, all people will have access to this life-saving gift. My friends, at that time, we will be able to come together and truly celebrate a new beginning. Until that time, may we continue to make the most of every day, for every day is a gift from God. Thanks be to God for new beginnings. Amen. I invite you to join with me now in a time of prayer. God of history and God of the present moment, we give thanks for our ancestors in faith. We recall the faithful journeys of those whose stories are shared in the Bible. We are inspired by those who throughout time have taken great risk in proclaiming your desire for justice and equality. We are grateful for family members, church workers, and others who have made your love known to us in the past, and those who touch our lives this day. Oh God, we pray for your continued guidance as we live out our faith. May the challenges that we are faced with not defeat us, but rather make us stronger. May we find the courage and the strength we need to continue working for justice and equality. May we be open to the many ways in which you reveal your presence to us. May we be inspired to offer you our thanks and our praise. May we help to make your love known to other people through acts of compassion and words of affirmation. And now, dear God, it is out of loving concern that we enter into a time of silent prayer.
Most gracious God, we now join all who have dreamed of your reign on earth, being as it is in heaven, praying together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now, may the God of new beginnings bless you this day and in all the days ahead. Let us go forth in God's peace. Amen.